Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Melissa coming to you from the beautiful country roads of West Virginia. And today we are potting up those tomato and pepper plants. In a previous video, we planted some tomatoes and peppers together. And that was on April 23rd. Today is May 13th. Oh yeah, it's Friday the 13th. Happy Friday the 13th. And I hope you all had a great Mother's Day. I hope all the mothers out there, the, just all the different types of mothers, you know. There's so many stepmothers, mothers who've lost children, grandmothers, people who want to be mothers, men who want to be, have kids, you know, all of you. I hope you had a great day. I hope somebody appreciated you. I hope somebody did something nice for you. I hope somebody gave you a kind word, kind word, and I hope in some way you felt appreciated and loved and valued. And today is Friday the 13th. Wait a second, yeah, my bad, hold on. Yes, today is Friday the 13th and we planted these seeds in soil on April 23rd. It's been about 20 days and this is what we have. There they are, little babies. Those are tomatoes, that's basil. We have more tomatoes, more tomatoes, peppers. Here was a fail. The peppers I wanted the most of, the Hungarian hot wax. I had two, two germinate. Well, I did go ahead and buy four um, Hungarian hot wax pepper plants. I may get a few more. Those are a variety that we like to can a good bit. Here are more. The red hot cherries germinated beautifully. A lot of pepper plants, you know, they take a little time. Some pepper plants aren't very large. Sweet pepper plants seem to be bigger. And here are primarily cherry tomato plants. Ground cherries, which I've not grown before. Pumpkin on a stick. That is a variety that was gifted to me on a seeds, um, it's called Seed Saver Exchange or some kind of seed page. I will find the exact title on Facebook and they do giveaways, they play games, and if you win, they send you seed varieties and cards in the mail. It's pretty fun. There are those and these were the first ones to come up. The opolka, which is a paste tomato, were the ones that I demonstrated for you in that video, and they germinated, guys, in like four days or something. They uh, they really pumped them out there, and this even the little seedling stalks are very nice and hardy. And beside it, we have a New Yorker, an Amish paste, which is another paste tomato, and then back in there, there are some more. With my tomato and pepper seedlings, I do encourage that you use a heat mat. This one was pretty cheap off Amazon. It really helps with their germination. I also run a little fan back there. It's, it's nothing fancy. And that's just to encourage the stems of your seedlings are nice and strong and hardy. Kind of mimics wind and the elements to just sturdy them up and make them a little stronger. Back here are these pep these um, flower seedlings that we started together, and I have not done anything with them, just nothing. There's little coleus. They're trying so hard to live their best life, and they just can't because they don't have any room. These peat pellets, especially these big ones, they dry out so quickly. So I don't know. I I think I'm still more of a fan of the seed cell trays than I am of the peat pellets. They, then these flowers, my goodness, they need separated. They need to go in the ground. They, they need something. They need out of these tiny little pellets for the love. Look at this poor thing. He's like, separate me into four different plants or put me in the ground or do something with me other than leaving me in this tray here. And I don't like, ugh. And here are the lupin, lupine. Um, they've gotten quite large and they have had room, you know, they, they've had room to do their thing in these more like rose size starter pots. My Look at all this lovely goodness behind me. Oh, wow. 
Looney Goony, what's up, homie? Yeah. I have already prepared all of my cups. I'm choosing this time to use just clear plastic cups. I bought two packs of 16 for $2 and used a knife to poke a drainage hole in the bottom and just used a pencil to wallow it out a little bit more and filled the cups up with dirt. Here is my little work area. <laughs> I use this tub um, to prepare my potting soil. I used just bag potting mix. I added mosquito bits, which I love to add because it helps fight fungus gnats. I used some Vermistera worm castings. And I, again, I keep using little bits of this peat moss. I have that huge brick out in the garden. So I added peat moss from it. I then filled up all my cups, put them in their trays, and watered them so that the soil is already moist. One of the things that is super cool about tomatoes that I think is super cool about tomatoes is their root systems. Tomatoes will grow roots the whole way up the stem. And all of those tiny little white fibers that you see down there along the stem are roots waiting to grow. When they get in contact with the soil, those will be a much longer, much larger, stronger root system. So when you have your tomato seedlings, you want to pot them up into their lo uh, larger containers all the way up. You wanna bury that whole stem in the dirt so that the root system is that much bigger and that much stronger and you will have a much larger, healthier plant. To start out, all I'm going to do is simply go through and kind of make a hole with my finger in the cups. Like so. You can use really anything you want to do that if you would rather use something other than your finger anything will work. This is the neat little tool that came with my seed starting cell trays. While you're separating your seedlings, you do want to be careful not to break them. Um, I probably should have watered these first. That may have made it a little bit easier, but that's okay. So we're just gonna kind of grab the bottom here and gently pull on the stems to get them out of the tray. So you can see that I have two plants here. And really, I'm just gonna grab them, for, you know, I'm just gonna grab them and pull them apart, making sure I have roots on both. Set it down in there and push it down as far as you can. You know, you want to bury the stem as much as possible. So now the whole stem of the tomato is down in the cup. Take your plant. And in the case of the tomato, bury the stem as much as possible. So really just those top leaves are what is sticking out of the dirt. The other key thing is don't forget to label your cups, people. Take it from Melissa. Melissa knows. You don't label those things good and then you have no idea what you're growing out there. You think you've got a cherry tomato and it's a beef steak and you don't have room and whatnot. Or you think you've planted a bunch of hot wax and really they're purple bells. Sharpies suck, <laughs> in my opinion, for gardening. It, I am going to label all of these cups with a Sharpie because that's all I have. If I were to keep these cups outside in the elements and the rain and the sun, the Sharpie would fade. It would go away. The best thing you can do is buy yourself a garden marker, the black garden marker, something about the UV rays, the ink they use. I don't know, but they're fantastic and they don't fade. They do stay and you can see what you got going on out there. This is a great example of what I've been telling you about seed starting and how big the process can get. Those two little rows of that tiny little seed starting tray is now in all these cups. 
So you do have to keep that in mind when you're thinking about how much space you have to start your own plants and how much space you have in your garden. Do you have room for all of these things? And if not, do you have people that you can give them to or somebody who may buy them from you? garden family we have this whole tray of tomatoes potted up into bigger cups and again buried most of them right up to their leaves that is all that I have potted up in this space so as you can see I'm not lying you got to have some room now I'm just gonna water them in with a little bit of fertilizer this is Fox Farm liquid bloom um, on the back, it says that general feeding, heavy feeding, supplementar, supplemental foliar feeding, or seedling and transplants. One tablespoon per gallon. So I'm just going to put a little dollop. Dollop will do ya. Why is my husband coming home from work? What is up with that? He is not supposed to be here. I'm gonna stir it up. And I'm just gonna go through and water them all in a little. And that's that. I'll go through and finish up all the rest of the plants and we'll see how much space they all take up. It's a totally different day. It's a couple days later. This took me a little while to do. You know, life happens. Got to homeschool the kid, got to go to work, got to do the responsible things. But I wanted to just check back in and show you all the space that's taken up now. And it's, it's a pretty hot mess. It's not my best looking setup. It's funny how you always put your worst stuff out there for the public. <laughs> Here it is. The top of the table is fully covered. Uh, I did go ahead and start some more things. Um, pink dianthus and a coneflower mix with Black Eyed Susans and those tall Shasta daisies. Those are all seeds I saved. So we'll see if anything happens. And I started sunflowers and a few herbs and things as well because sunflowers the birds eat them before they have a chance to sprout and the little yellow marigolds I just want to have better control over where I place them so there's all the tomatoes already have grown it's funny how you give them more space and they just take off and then down here below the table I just utilized underneath sorry uh, it's kind of hard to show you and just put them on the floor and put the lights you know under under the table so there she is I went from four trays this size to four trays that size so there you have it me with a filter because I am not secure enough to be on Facebook with absolutely no makeup. Anyway, there's the tomatoes and peppers. Three eggplants, sunflowers, marigolds, and herbs for the 2022 garden. I hope y'all are having a great day. If you're not, give it a day, two, three. Usually, eventually, every little thing will be okay. See ya.